most people think it's impossible for plants to eat food. But seeing as our garden is full of plants that eat bugs, it might even be possible that these plants actually work together to catch food, especially because they live right next to each other in our greenhouse. Every summer, I take some fly traps outside so that they can get some food while I film it for you guys. And every now and then, we see some pretty interesting stuff between the plants and bugs in our garden. Yet, this time, I filmed these two different plants working together for just a few seconds. In fact, some of you might even recognize this plant. This is red our typical flytrap who has a few sundews growing in the pot with him. If you didn't know, a sundew is also a carnivorous plant that works by getting bugs stuck to their leaves and then curls around them while slowly digesting them alive. Yes, it's brutal. Anyway, sundews often grow with other carnivorous plants because their seeds spread so easily. And seeing as Red here is a rescue flytrap that we got for pretty cheap, he shares his pot with a lot of different plants. And on a random day last summer, we filmed these two plants almost work together to catch some food. You guys probably know by now that Red isn't the best at catching food, but what makes this underwhelming miss almost special is how the fly's escape reflex causes it to jump straight into the sundew. And although he got lucky that the sundew didn't get a good grip on him, we've all seen how the glue from a sundew makes fly's wings get stuck, which is why he falls straight down before he eventually gets away. Now even though both of these plants missed this catch, it's obvious to see how they could work together. In my mind, the flytrap attracts a fly, the fly doesn't notice the sundew and gets its wings covered in glue, it can't fly away, and eventually ends up walking into a flytrap. And of course, the only way to test this dream of mine is to keep letting Red catch some food. And so, Red was out the very next day with his pot mate, the sundew. And after a couple minutes, it had managed to snag a fly right out of mid-air. And from this moment on, the battle between the fly and the sundew had begun. Yet, the fly didn't know that he would lose this battle no matter what he tried. You see, every single time he buzzes his wings or pushes his legs against these hairs, he only gets more covered in slimy glue. And little does he know that the more he struggles, the quicker the plants will curl around him. Because these hairs can also feel what's on them. However, this might be part of the fly's plan to get away. As the sundew steadily curls around his legs, he manages to pull himself onto the back of the trap without getting stuck. Seeing as all those tentacles have curled around his wing, which is below his body. While this means he can start to wriggle himself free, he will always be held back until he can get a good grip on something to help him pull his wing away from that strong glue. But just like we had predicted, he dangles upside down with his wings stuck behind him, all whilst being unaware of Red below him, ready for his next meal. And while we know that a flytrap is a dangerous place for bugs, this fly thinks these hairs are a good place to pull his wings free. Little does he know that these hairs are the fly trap's trigger hairs. Now, for the first time ever, we just saw two plants tag team a fly and it worked out perfectly. So what better way is there to see how well this team can work together than by trying them out again just one more time. So the very next day, we did just that. However, 
this was also the day that we saw the biggest crack in their partnership. Just like before, the Sanju grabs a fly straight out of the air and it immediately gets stuck in those sticky tentacles. Yet, these small flies always seem to be a little bit smarter than the rest. You see, rather than struggling and buzzing its wings, this one stays completely still, as if he is figuring out what he needs to do next to get where he was going. But after a couple minutes, he figures that he should only push the few tentacles that his feet are caught in, which means that he barely triggers the plant and easily escapes. However, this isn't the end of his fight. Even though he manages to avoid the flytrap because he didn't get his wings full of glue, he ends up getting caught by the same Sanju all over again. Yet this time, he isn't as calm. He tries the same technique as earlier, only pushing on the tentacles that are directly touching his feet. And although it does help him move from one side of the trap to the other, this time he panics and his wing gets caught in some dew while frantically trying to buzz himself free. And once again, this means he falls straight down to the trap waiting below him and Red gets another meal. Now, earlier I mentioned that this battle shows us the crack in their partnership, but everything seemed to work out perfect. They even managed to catch the fly before it completely got away. Yet, that's the exact issue. Sunjus don't usually catch such big flies. In fact, they usually catch smaller flies or even moths that struggle to get out of those sticky tentacles. And Venus flytraps usually catch bigger bugs, like the flies we just saw or things like spiders. So while these two live together in this pot, these small bugs might get caught by the sunju, but if they find their way into a flytrap, they can cause Red to close his traps when he otherwise shouldn't. Because as we know, flytraps waste energy on small bugs that can eventually crawl out of these teeth. And the opposite is also true. Not only will the main prey attracted to this pot be big flies because of red, but when they get caught by the sunju, they often wiggle their way free because they're too big for it to handle. And that means the sunjus are wasting energy too. And although neither one of these two plants are particularly special to me, or anyone rarely, and this discovery of ours isn't fatal for the plants, we should still rarely separate them out. But I can't help but wonder what other battles these two mats go on together in the future. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more. If you watched this far, you might want to see what it looked like when I simulated a Venus flytrap habitat. I'll see you there.